Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel to a very casual on the floor video because the thought process that went into this video concept was kind of a lot for me. I was not expecting it to be such a hard decision, but we are going over the puzzles that I would not part with. So this is based off of a couple comments that I got recently because I'm someone who, once I do a puzzle, I usually hand it off or I donate it or I give it to a friend or family. And very seldom do I keep them for myself because I just don't normally redo puzzles. But there are some in my collection that I would have a hard time saying goodbye to. So for me, I went into this in the mindset of if we were moving, maybe across the seas or something like that, and I could only bring 10 puzzles, like we only had room for 10, which ones would I bring? And I had a hard time deciding. I didn't think it would be that hard because I'm someone who usually doesn't have like sentimental attachment to items in general. Maybe it's because we have moved so frequently. We've had to downsize quite a bit throughout our marriage. So it is always a real possibility we might move overseas. And if that's the case, we'd have to downsize a lot. So that was my mindset of like, what puzzles would I bring to redo again or because I have an attachment to them together, make it feel like my collection. It would make it feel like home if I was away. So that was my mindset. And we're just gonna go into this in no particular order. I do have some runners up, like if I happen to have like an extra foot in my <laughs> luggage or in my packing cube, um, I have some extras that I will mention too, but I'm also curious about what yours would be. Like which puzzles would you save? Would you get, save one that's like super sentimental? Would you save a like, really expensive one? Would you save one that you just like to redo over and over? Because it was a hard decision and I'm very curious what you would choose. So we're gonna go into this. Of course, I would love to save more and I think I could have easily chose like 30 puzzles, but these are the 10 that I would bring with me if ever I had to leave the rest of my collection behind. I'm gonna start off with this one here, which was the one I was really torn about choosing. This one is by Buffalo Games. It's called Up, Up, and Away. And I was really torn between this one and the one I got at Nationals recently. Now, you may have chosen the one that I got at Nationals because it's signed and it's from the convention. And I was very tempted for those reasons. But this is the one I've redone so often that it would not feel like my collection if it was not in it. So I've done this one, I want to say at least seven times at this point. This one and a few others are like tied for first place for which puzzles I've redone the most and that is very rare and I of course love hot air balloons I don't even know where I got this puzzle I may have even thrifted it but I absolutely love it and it's one that on a, any given day I could like pick up and do and be happy so I decided to go with this one instead of the one from nationals because I chose something else for that event purpose and I just feel like this one I just have more of an attachment to it than the other one does. I hope that makes sense. The one that I would keep from that event, because I can't keep every single one that was signed or every single one that I did there, because I'd be like half of my decisions. Um, so I decided to go with this one here, which is called Sweet Street by Ravensburger. And I got this one, one, because it is signed, two is from that event. And I decided to go with this one aside from the other hot air balloon one because I did this one with my friend Laura and we have puzzled together in the past before, which is why I didn't choose another one that we had done in a speed puzzling competition. And I thought this one would be fun because it's a larger piece count. It does remind me of the uh, event, but also the friendship. And I feel like this is the one that I have more of an attachment to than the one I did in the finals. So I decided to go with this one and I think I'm happy with that decision. I think if I had more space, I would bring the Air Balloon Valley, but I think I would prefer that one in my home. So the next one I have here is Santoroni Sunset, which is also one that I've redone a lot. I can't even tell you. I don't even track it anymore. That's how many times I've done this one. I love it. It's only 300 pieces. It takes me like 40 minutes and it's one that me and my mom have done together. It's just like such a sweet image, but it, again, it also just makes it feel like my collection with this one in it. Cause like one day I had like put it on like a different shelf and I was like, oh my gosh, where'd that puzzle go? Did I give it away? And I was like stressing out cause I thought I like, gave it away by accident and no, it was just in a different spot. But I was like so sad at that moment because I thought I had gotten rid of it, but I didn't. And I still think that's the reason why I would need to keep it in my collection and bring it with me because I do this one so often. Again, it's just a nice, easy, like late night or even just midday puzzle that I can just like quickly do. And it just like, makes me happy. I love that one. 
Moving on to this one here, I decided to go with this one from Sunis, which is the Magic Box. This one here is a few reasons why I decided to go with this one. For one, I love it. I love the gradient puzzles from them. I like gradient puzzles in general, and I didn't want to bring a ton of them, so I decided to go with this one because for one, it's just fun. There's like a lot of colors, but also the colors aren't in multiple places. I had a really good time when doing this one, but also Sunis is actually one of the first brands that ever reached out to me, and I was actually her first person that ever did a video for her. So I feel like that relationship I don't know, marked the start of like my YouTube channel kind of. So I kind of chose it for that reason, but also I just loved this puzzle a lot. And actually the first puzzle that she gave me was Marine Life, which I no longer have. Um, I, I liked it, but I didn't love it, where these ones I love. Like I have this one and I have Jelly Bean still. I did have the third gradient puzzle as well, but I think this would be the one that I would be happy to redo again. So I decided to go with this one from Soonness. Next up we have this one from Magnolia. I feel like it's one of those brands that just like, it needs to be my collection at this point. It just feels like it completes it, if that makes sense. Um, but this one is called Tea Time with Alice. It's one of their first collections that they ever did in 2020, I think is when they first launched. And I actually bought this when the, you could only get it from Turkey. And I was just really excited about it. And I loved doing this puzzle. And I guess I have like new ones from them that I also enjoy, but I feel like just keeping the one that started my obsession with them um, just makes sense. So I ended up going with this one. It's just such a fun image. I do feel like their newer stuff though has, especially with this artist, which is Rami Lerda, um, is that the background has a lot more to it now, um, where this one, it's just like pretty much gradient in the back, but it's, it's fun. I love it. There's still enough to work with and the quality is fantastic. So I think that one would have to be in my collection. Next up we have this one, which I just I just love. It just makes me happy. This is by New York Puzzle Company and it's called Mr. Fly. This one is discontinued, unfortunately, but it's such a fun, quirky image. And I've only done it the one time, but it's one of those puzzles that was like, I can't get this one again unless I like magically found it on like eBay or something like that. But I absolutely love this one. It's just like quirky and fun and just like makes me smile and I would need to have it in my collection. So that one would be saved. The next one that I would bring with me is this one by Antelope. This is called Amsterdam Weekend. And a couple reasons why I would keep this. For one, this puzzle is so much fun. I flew through it. It took me like four hours. It's such a great, easy, beginner friendly puzzle because you have like very distinct color blocking with some fun things at the bottom. Like it was very easy and simple to put together. Um, it also reminds me of me and Antelope. We met at the International Puzzle Convention. So this puzzle kind of like fills that gap where it reminds me of the event that I went to, but also the brand relationship that I have with them. And I've really enjoyed this puzzle so much. And again, it's one of those puzzles like I would love to redo again. And I think if I had a much smaller collection, I would redo this one so often. Um, and I think this is also like my biggest recommendation. If you want to go into a thousand pieces, you're a newer puzzler or they scare you, this is a great one to go with because you really can't go wrong. Quality is fantastic. And the image I think just makes it very easy to do as a beginner. So I love that one a lot. And then the next one, I was really torn between this one and Season. So I decided to go with this one from Schmidt called Magical Journey. This one is kind of tricky to find sometimes, so I'll try to link it if I can down below. But I was really torn between this one and the other one. The other one I redid recently. This one I only did the one time, but I loved it. I loved the experience. It was one of my favorite puzzles from 2022, I believe. I think it was my favorite puzzle or this runner up, something like that. Anyways, I loved it. It was so much fun. Also reminds me of Cherry Potter. Also has hot air balloons. Like this puzzle was such a fun time. It just, it just makes me happy. I think that's just the, the final decision maker is like, does it make me happy? Yes, it does. This is one that makes me like smile and just like, I would be so excited to do this one again. So decided to go with that one. And then next up, we have this one, I'm flying through this video, um, but we have this one here and you guys will not be surprised. This is by Art and Fable. It's called East of the Sun, West of the Moon. I don't know, I feel like I've had this one for years at this point. I actually bought it from Odyssey Fine Puzzles, which is a story that doesn't even exist anymore because they retired. And it's one of their first collections. Art and Fable only had 500 piece puzzles at the time. They had like four to choose from. I was able to see that brand grow over time, which is really cool, but also, 
I've redone this puzzle at least five times at this point and I'm really itching to do it again. I feel like I should do it soon. Um, so maybe I'll do that in like a little puzzle with me video to like redo our favorite puzzles because that would be really fun. This is one that I've loved. It's just like a fun storybook style image and it just makes me happy. I love the texture of the pieces. And again, it's one of those puzzles like I would be so sad if it like disappeared from my collection. And so for my 10th spot, I'm very torn and this might be cheating. So for my 10th spot, I have this one here, which is a wooden puzzle by Mark Capitella and it's a hand cut one. Now there are several that I was deciding between and I would feel like I would have room for the other ones, but I decided to go with this one for my hand cut puzzles because I did meet him. He gifted me this and it was super fun. It's called Eye of the Palm. And it was just such a fun experience. Loved the cuts that he makes. He's a very skilled artisan and it's super cool. And I feel like it also reminds me of Puzzle Jam South when I went there, but I'm also very torn to bring this one. So this one you haven't seen yet and it is by Victory Puzzles, which a brand I've done before and have worked with in the past. This one I purchased because it is their first of their artisan line. So they took the hand cuts from Mark and was able to digitize it to then create the exact same cuts, but in a laser form. So I bought this, I pre-ordered it, which very seldom happens. So I pre-ordered it, purchased it, and it would be very tempting to bring with me. So we'll, if this could be considered like one, <laughs> that would work. If not, I would bring the hand cut one and I'd be fine. But this would be a really cool one to bring with me because it is a lot more pieces. It's 578 pieces. It is called Eyes Full of Stars. And it's just a cool image and such a cool concept of how that all happened. So we'll, we'll possibly bring that one too. And then I'll just show you some honorable mentions that I would consider if for some reason maybe space didn't work out or maybe I had extra space that I could bring a few others along. So first up, we have this one here, which I'm almost considering more Christmas decor. It's by Wentworth, who you guys know I work with, and I of course wanna bring like all my Wentworths with me, but I decided this would be the one that I would probably bring because it is the nativity scene. And I was doing this one because most likely our regular nativity scene is so bulky and fragile, I know it would not make the move. So I would bring this one instead um, because it would still have like the puzzle, but also has a Wentworth and also it's like a Christmas decoration. So this would be the one that I would pick for that purpose. Um, this one also, this is one that I was deciding between. I don't think I would bring it even as an honorable mention. I think I'm much happier with the Magical Journey one, even though I love this one and have redone it a couple times. I feel like I've like gotten my use out of it, if that makes sense. So I would probably leave this one at home. I think that's what I've decided. This is one that I also would consider bringing. This is the Air Balloon Valley. But I do feel like the Buffalo Games kind of fits that void for me to have hot air balloons in a puzzle. The Sweet Streets one also fills the gap of like wanting to cherish the memory of going to nationals. So this one would be an honorable mention and I would consider bringing it with me if I had the space. And then finally we have this one from Ravensburger, which is the artist palette. I've done this one twice already and I could see me doing it over and over again, similar to Santorini Sunset or the other ones that I've redone quite a bit. This one is like on its way. And so this one I could definitely see bringing with me if I had the room, but it's bulky and big. So I don't know if that would be the case. See, as I'm sitting here, I could think of like 20 other puzzles here that I would love to bring with me. Like, of course, I'd love to bring a couple villager puzzles. I'd love to bring an Ellen X6 or a Tanya Wicks, but, and, honest, these are the puzzles that when I look at them, this is like my collection in a nutshell. And if I only could bring 10 with me, I feel like I would be pretty content with this collection, both for piece count, but also picture and the stories and the memories that are attached to them. So I'm pretty happy with this selection. Again, I would love to know which ones you would choose or if you would have chosen something different in my collection, or maybe you think I forgot about one that I should have chosen instead. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.